In a dream, I heard a speech from a being who identified himself as the supreme being, the highest God. And he was speaking to the world. He was responding to the events that were happening on the earth. He said he had had enough, and we'd never listened to his messengers in the first place. He said, so here I am. Then he said, there's no difference between murder and killing. No matter how it gets twisted, there is no difference. He said, stop trying to reinterpret my will. I am here to clarify my long time stance against humans killing each other. He said, maybe I haven't made myself completely clear. So far the record, here it is again. Somehow people keep coming up with the idea that I want them to kill their neighbor. Well, I don't. And to be honest, I'm really getting sick and tired of it. Get it straight. Not only do I not want anybody to kill anyone, but the moral laws that I built into you, you know better. They were written in your hearts. I thought it was simple enough that anybody would understand. The Supreme Being said his name had been invoked countless times over the centuries as a reason to kill in what he called an unending cycle of violence. He said, I don't care how holy someone claims to be. If a person tells you it's my will, that they kill someone, they're just wrong. I don't care what religion you are or who you think your enemy is. Here it is one more time, no killing in my name or any other God's name for that matter ever again. As a matter of long-standing policy, I have traditionally left the task of interpreting my messages and divine will to clerics, rabbis, priests, imams, and Bible scholars. But you know what he said? He said, they've all got it backwards. They think I'm the asshole from the Old Testament. Look, you might find me in that book, but my way has been corrupted and convoluted by people that think I chose them over my entire creation. Anyone that thinks that way needs to look again at that book. You know when I retired, I divided the earth into 70 nations and gave each of my 70 sons a nation to be responsible for. But at some point in time, I had to take most of it back from those sons. This was because of their improper treatment of the people. And I did give it all to only one son. But he screwed it up so badly I had to send a more compassionate son not to take it over again, but to tell us we don't have to live that way. The locals called him Jesus. You may have heard of him. I'm really proud of him, even though he is more like his mother, the goddess. Anyway, theologians and laymen alike have been given the task of pondering the mysteries, deciding for themselves what to do as a matter of faith. My decision to manifest on this material plane now has been motivated by the deep sense of shock, outrage, sorrow, and violence carried out in my name and over the ramifications all around the globe because of it. I tried to put it in the simplest possible terms for you people so you'd get it straight. Do not kill. I guess I figured I'd left no room for confusion after putting it in such a small sentence with such one-syllable words, but how much more clear can I get it? But somehow it all gets twisted around, and next thing you know, somebody's spouting off some nonsense about God says I have to kill those people. God wants me to kill that individual. It's all God's will. Look, it's not God's will. News flash. God's will is don't kill people. Worse yet, many of the worst violators claim that their actions are justified by passages in that book. You know what? That may be true, but remember, that was not me. That happened to be one of my good-for-nothing, wrathful, jealous sons. I sent Jesus to tell you he had it all wrong, but somehow no one would listen to him. I even gave him as a ransom sacrifice to that vengeful son to buy mankind back. And that wrathful son did lay off of you people for a while, but you keep giving him power because you're still praying to him. And to be honest, there's some contradictory stuff in that book y'all read anyway. Remember, most of it is inspired by man's concept of me. And most don't even know 
who the one true supreme being really is. That raffle son did a good job with his deception, so I could see how it could be misleading. And frankly, much of the material that got in that book is dogmatic doctrine intended to keep you enslaved and controlled by that one I call the God of this world. He's an imposter. I turn my head for a second and suddenly all this weird stuff gets put in the beginning of that book and everybody thinks it's me. It absolutely drives me up the wall. Look, there's no such thing as a holy war. There are only unholy wars. Just because some asshole comes along using the stupid concept of holy war just to further their own hateful agenda. It's not holy. Then he stressed, I don't care what faith you are. Everybody's been making the same mistake since the dawn of time. The Muslims massacre the Hindus. The Hindus massacre the Muslims. The Buddhist, everybody massacres the Buddhist. The Jews, don't even get me started on those hardline right-wing badass Israeli nationalists. And the Christians, you people say you believe in my son who says turn the other cheek, but you've been killing everybody you can get your hands on since the Crusades. Can't you see, people? Are you morons? There are a ton of different religious traditions out there, and different cultures worship a different God in different ways. But the basic message is always the same. Every religious belief system under the sun say you're supposed to love your neighbor. It's not that hard a concept to grasp. Why would you think I'd want it any other way? Humans don't need religion or me as an excuse to kill each other. Truthfully, you've been doing that without any help from me since you were freaking apes. The whole point of knowing the Supreme Being is to have a higher standard of behavior. How much more obvious can I get it? I'm talking to all of you. Do you hear me? I don't want you to kill anybody. I'm against it across the board. How many times do I have to say it? Then he was gone, and I was wide awake.